everybody. The uh, you know, today I'm going to be kind of continuing with a, a theme. Um, and uh, first I'm going to start with one of my, a quote from one of my favorite poets and wise men, Rumi. What you seek is also seeking you. I'm going to begin by, by talking a little bit about uh, the exercise that I suggested last time I taught, which was offering ourselves up in communion with the one, with the light. And, um, and I don't really have time to do what I intend to do, which is let other people share their experiences. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit of my experience with, uh, with this exercise. And, um, you know, obviously communion is unity oneness so what we're doing is offering ourselves up in you know for unity with the light um you know the the saying that that you know what you seek is seeking you there my experience of offering myself into communion is that the light welcomes me and there is a wonderful sense of belonging like this unity is our natural state. And um, once we uh, have this experience, this is one of the, these are the types of experiences that kind of demonstrate to us who and what we truly are as spiritual beings. You know, um, you know we were spirit before we entered this body, we are spirit now and we will be spirit after we leave this body. And um, that is who and what we truly are. So these kind of experiences, these kind of, of exercises, um, even attending uh, a church like the metaphysical church, um, where we're going to expand our understanding of, of spirituality and, uh, and our, ourselves as spiritual beings, um, will lead us to a place where the expression of that spiritual consciousness within our physical life becomes our mission or our, uh, what we do. Okay. I'm going to touch, I'm going to begin by touching on a few things that I taught that I've, I've, uh, touched on in other, uh, teachings. I'm going to start with identity and identity is a story that we tell about ourselves and then we attach ourselves to it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a military man. I'm a sailor. I'm a pilot. I'm a, I'm an engineer, you know, uh, you know, I'm tall, I'm short, I'm skinny, I'm fat, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, generally speaking, we tend to, we, we tend to tie ourselves to, to superficial characteristics, you know, I'm smart, I'm, I'm, uh, my, you know, I'm black, I'm white, I'm short, like I said, short, tall, engineer, a lot of times our identity is wrapped around what we do for a living, um, sometimes we, we have an illness, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm an addict, or I have cancer, or I have diabetes, or, and we can have literally build an identity around our, our illness. Um, you know, a, an identity can, can bind us to a group. It can also isolate us. Uh, we, build, we also build identities for the people around us. They may or may not know that we're doing this, um, but we see people in certain ways based on how uh, uh, based on the story that we make up about them. We build an identity for them. Um, I wanted to bring up this the particular concept of identity because we're going to be talking about personal honesty and, uh, and becoming more and more aware of, of who and what we truly are. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review quickly the, the four steps of the process I talked about, you know, a couple of teachings ago. Okay, first is personal honesty. Um, personal honesty is, is being honest uh, with ourselves about ourselves, essentially. Um, usually in the beginning of becoming honest, it, we, we need to get honest about what we've done and what we, what's been done to us. Then, then we start to expand our honesty. Um, there's an emotional honesty. Emotional honesty is where I express what I'm feeling in the moment that I'm feeling it in an appropriate way that's not harmful to myself or others. Um, so that's emotional honesty. Uh, 
there's kind of a spiritual honesty. And spiritual honesty is having the consciousness where we recognize who and what we are as spiritual beings and expressing that within the physical realm, within the human realm. And of course, identity, recognizing identity as a story, not as what we truly are. That's all part of honesty. The second step is embracing peace. And of course, embracing peace to a lot of people who have been practicing spiritual practices for a long time seems kind of like a no-brainer. But it's amazing how often I resist peace. And let, you know, a couple of times ago, I talked about how peace of mind was kind of a shock to me <laughs> that when I that when I uh, finally uh, experienced it, it was like, what the heck is this? You know, my well, there's no conversation going on in my head, you know, um, and it was it was kind of weird. Um, some people call, call it the committee in our heads, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I have some funny stories. A, a friend of mine told me the, to not act, to, to not have an argument with somebody who's not actually in the room with me. And um, that was that was wise advice. Um, so embracing peace has to do with making peace with peace. In other words, you know, accepting that it's okay to not have any thoughts running through my head. Um, to actually be experiencing right now as it is. That's, a, that's one of the outcomes of peace. Uh, and also, it's, a, you know, peace, a lot of times peace is making peace with our past because it's usually our, our experiences from the past that sort of activate us emotionally that moves us out of the present moment. And once we're moved out of the pre present moment, peace is lost. You know, when we start, you know, projecting into the future, you know, so, some people think of worrying as almost like a good thing. Um, but worrying actually is where we're projecting into the future a, a situation that's bad, that's painful or something or threatening to us, and then having an emotional reaction to it right now, fear usually. Um, you know, a friend of mine, you know, actually explained to me that when, when we project a, a, a situation that has never happened and then have an emotional reaction to it in the right now, that is kind of the definition of a delusion. And uh, so once again, and it gets back to personal honesty that, that the only place reality really exists is right now. Okay, so making peace. So embracing peace is the second step. The third step is communion. That's what the exercise is about, okay? And communion uh, starts with intention. In other words, I have to intend to, to seek communion with the light, with God, whatever word you want to put on that. God doesn't really have any words, so he doesn't really care what we call him. The, uh, and, the, you know, the mystical experience is always a, an experience of oneness. And it doesn't really matter what religious context we put it in or what culture, cultural context we put it in. The mystical experience is always an experience of oneness and unity. The, uh, you know, we are one, okay? And there's kind of a progression that happens. You know, at first this happens within ourselves where, where we recognize that we are one with the light. And we, we start to think in that way and see ourselves in that way. And we start seeing ourselves as this, as this infinite, perfectly created spiritual being. And um, that changes the way we perceive the world so our, our uh, perception of this unity starts to expand and we start to see, you know, we, we, we kind of have a habit of judging people based on our differences. And, um, you know, that person doesn't think the same way I do. They're, they don't think politically the way I do, or they have a different religion than I do, or they're taller or shorter, or they're better looking, you know, et cetera. All, all the stuff that, that we judge people um, and judge ourselves too. Once we are operating from a consciousness where we recognize who and what we truly are, it isn't very long before we start recognizing who and what they are too. Okay? And this oneness starts to evolve within our lives. And we no longer judge people because what am I going to judge? You know, my spirit's more infinite than your spirit. <laughs> you know, that would be kind of ridiculous. Um, 
And finally, that, that brings us to the, the final step, which is expression. Okay? So we carry this consciousness of, of oneness and unity into our daily lives. And the idea of who and what we are into our daily lives. You know, actions uh, are determined by who and what we truly are. Actions are determined by the consciousness of unity and who the actual others are. You know, and, you know, actions are determined by consciousness of unity and being one with the actual others in our lives, in our physical lives. You know, expression is allowing the consciousness of the light to control our words and actions. Now, the interesting part of this is that this comes out in a lots and lots of different ways. It can come out in a, in a dissipation. You know, a lot of times I resent other people because of uh, some perceived... Um, well, I want to say difference, but, you know, the, the, the idea of separation is always based on differences between us. You know, the great line in The Course of Miracles that says all illusions are illusions of differences. And, um, you know, what spiritual consciousness gives us is this connection where we see the actual other and feel that unity with them. And to harm another person, harm another human being is to literally harm ourselves. The, uh, so that literally, that, that changes the way that we interact with people. It changes the way that we interact with ourselves. Um, you know, in, in, in situations where we used to become highly defensive because we saw the other person as separate from us and attacking us, or attacking our ideas, or attacking our perception of the world, all those things, you know, that, that may very well be what's happening. But those things just don't seem as important as they used to. So it doesn't frighten us the way it used to, and we react differently. We may even get to a place in consciousness where we can welcome their ideas, compare, compare them to our own, and discard the ones that we find not to be valuable. Is human, you know, and I haven't said this yet, so I'm gonna say it now. My experience of spiritual growth is always growing from a, a self-centered, self-conscious mentality to a more expansive, inclusive, unified consciousness. So, so that is what I'm describing here. I'm describing the process of moving from a self-centered person. And by the way, self-centered people, which we all kind of start out self-centered because babies are, there nobody is more self-centered than a screaming baby that, that wants a bottle, you know, whatever. Um, so we all start out in that condition. Being self-centered isn't necessarily a character defect or character problem, um, depending on where you are in your development in life. <laughs> You know, it's perfectly appropriate for, for teenagers to be self-centered or for, a, you know, for a 45-year-old father, it's probably not that appropriate. Um, so self-centered people tend to be much more uh, defensive, much more dishonest. Um, they see things from a very limited, sh short-term perspective most of the time. Um, as we expand, uh, as our as our world expands, as our consciousness expands, we start to see ourselves in a different context. We see ourselves as part of the whole rather than separate from. You know, to a self-centered person, it feels like life is being imposed from the outside. Um, to a spiritually conscious person, life flows outward from us. You know, a, uh, you know, a spiritually conscious person can often perceive how their mind in conjunction with all minds and the mind of God is literally creating reality. And um, 
that is an awesome place to be, by the way. And uh, I need to make sure I'm not doing too bad on time. Okay. So actually, I, I'm going to uh, to kind of wrap this up with with a with a couple of little things. Okay. When we have a direct spiritual experience of who and what we are, it changes the way we see the world and the people around us. A sense of belonging, you know, that was one of the things that, that I experienced in, in offering myself up in, to communion with the light is the sense of welcome and belonging. Like that was our, my natural state and that's where I always should have been, you know. So we, we, we experience and express a sense of belonging in the world, a sense of belonging with other people, even people who are, who are outwardly very different from us. We still have that sense of belonging and peace even in their presence, or not even, even with their presence, just we just have that sense of, of being and belonging wherever we are. Um, because we're perceiving the actual other rather than the superficial other, okay? Superficial others can, can seem very different, but the actual other that always exists in communion with my higher consciousness. So I think I'm, I'm actually getting to a point where I, where I think that... Uh, that this lesson is complete. I'm going to to end it with with two small things. One is going to be uh, this this continuing statement that spiritual growth is growth from a self centered, limited mentality where we resist expansion to a more expansive, inclusive, unified consciousness where freedom belonging and peace of mind are our dominant states of being. So once again, as Rumi says, what, what you seek is also seeking you. Thank you very much.